what the flick. We are back with the next three episodes of Jessica Jones. Jones in for more. Uh, William Bibiani, Meredith Placco, Kim Horter, Francis Maxwell, sighing like he knows exactly what, what's going on. Uh, we're talking about episode four, a.k.a. 99 Friends, episode five, a.k.a. The Sandwich Saved Me, and episode six, a.k.a. You're a Winner! Uh, Love let's, those titles. Yeah, yeah, and it's tricky re reviewing them in this way because we're kind of doing the broad sweep. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's, let's focus on specific key yeah. moments. Let's do that. Let's talk about some of our favorite moments so far. Kim, you seem very enthused. Well, I just watched episode six, so maybe I should go yeah. last on Meredith. Go. Key oh gosh. Okay. So episode four had some really good. Well, actually, I won't. I won't even say good. Let's kind of go in a little bit. The thing. Yeah. Um. The fight scenes, because we were talking about this, not digging it's, them. No. Really? It's, it's frustrating. Yeah. Like, it's what, does she only know how to push people? Well, is that well, it? We, we, she isn't a professionally trained no, fighter I, in this case. But if you've got the strength, you use your fists. Well, you don't need, you can just push. I know that, but yeah. I'm saying, like, it's it's the same thing as, like, is Maybe Loki it's a professional of what she did to um, that's, Luke's wife, oh. so she doesn't want to hit me. So, yeah, there could be that as well. Like, trust yeah. me, I'm not trying to be picky on it. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, if you're, if, like, let's, we're, we're reviewing a superhero show, and I don't know the background behind her, but I, what I'm saying is, like, it's not believable enough for me. Like, she has got uh, enormous strength, trust me, but it's like, for instance, I don't think that everyone who is going to come up against her, if they're trained fighters, are going to be, like, uh, kind of standoffish that she's just pushing everyone. Maybe mm -hmm. someone have something to combat against that. But even the fight when you go into the fight at the massive weed house, it's the same thing. It seems like mm -hmm. Luke himself is also just kind of pushing people around, which is fine, but I guess I'm being a little picky because you come back from Daredevil. He's trained. I understand yes. that. But it's just like... The fight sequences are just very light lost stuff. Also, me. that's not a massive weed house. I was actually very disappointed with <laughs> the scale yeah. of that Big weed house. house. It was good enough to get a few good nights out of. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, see, mine isn't so much how they're fighting, because they are street brawlers, but mine is kind of just like, you'll see her like, and I'm like, you didn't even connect. Come on. Like, Kristen, <laughs> like, 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 if I'm going to like push ah, someone, it's going to be like, yeah, hey, you know? So there's, you know, and you? it could be from the shot angle. It could be however. So it's just a little bit, I'm a little disappointed in just some of the, some of that with the, the shots mm -hmm. and the direction uh, as opposed to Daredevil, where, you know, I don't expect them to be like trained fighters, but that's been my biggest gripe so far just overall mm -hmm. with this series. I don't know. It just seems to me like we're kind of getting used to the idea that all superhero mm -hmm. stories need to have certain things, and one of those things is big action sequences. No, I don't, I don't want that. No, I know you're yeah. not, but I'm just saying, I think it's worth pointing out that Jessica Jones is actively not trying to be that show, so maybe it is more glaring when the few fight scenes they have aren't very good, Yeah. But if they were too good, I would also be crying no, foul, just, so it's a tough balance. Just, if you're gonna, if you're gonna push someone, just have it connect, just physically connect, that's yeah. all I'm asking, just come on, DP. Maybe Kristen Ritter's just that much of a badass, I and like, she pushed true. someone once, yeah. and then like, his chest cavity <laughs> caved in, and he was like, Kristen, why? And she's like, yeah. no, I like that guy! And then that's what happened. Yeah. But in terms of stuff from uh, episode four, Malcolm. Yeah. I, yes. I love Malcolm. I'm so happy to finally get to know him. I didn't see that coming with Malcolm. I, I did as soon as Simpson was yeah. like suspicious of him. Mm. I thought, oh, it is yeah. him. The yeah. perfect crime. Mm. <laughs> I, I, like, I quite like him as a character. The old blonde Chris Evans, as I've been just seeing him. Mean, he looks very similar. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Simpson. A.K.A. Gary Daniels. Yeah. 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 Gary Daniels as well. Yes. But what do you think about his character? I, like, I quite like him. I like that he is... I like Obviously that he actually skilled. is skilled. Yes, he's um, very he's tactical skilled. Tactical training, there. Yeah, he fighting. Was, yeah. He was, he's very useful, but he's also dealing with his remorse in the only way that he knows to, and that's to try and make things right. You don't recognize choice. his name, do you? Who, me? Will Simpson from the comics? You don't well, know? It's, it's well, not, I, I, his first I've name disclosed that oh, I'm not a yeah. But regardless, yeah. I disclosed that I don't recognize him from the comics. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because they changed the first name, so yeah. But no, I, I recognize him, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, is that a spoiler? If, I, if, I, if, I, if, you, look, if you Google it, you'll know. Yeah, we'll okay. go into it later because I have theories <laughs> about how it's going to tie into Daredevil Season 2. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, he, he was originally more of a Daredevil character. Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, thank now you. I like his character even more, so I'll find his, out more. I think his character's interesting because at first he's just like this random thuggish villain, and mm -hmm. he's not a huge actor, so mm -hmm. you don't think he's going to stick around for too yeah. long. Yeah. And Aww. then, um, well, he's fine. He's just not like, you don't recognize him. It's not like Rachel Taylor. Oh, you were in Man-Thing. Neat. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. no, it's like this guy might just be out in one episode and we'd never think anything of it. Here, he's sticking around. He's here with this woman that it wasn't his fault, but he did try mm -hmm. to kill her. And he manages to seduce her in one night. And he's kind of not, he's I like that. 
On one hand, he's not a great boyfriend because there's that whole mm -hmm. bit where she was just like, last night was fun, but I don't need your opinion. And yet at the same time, he does go down on her. So, you know, yeah. he's very giving. <laughs> so he's, he's very considerate. You, you, know? you know what he is? He's a white knight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's totally that archetypal white knight character. He's like, I got to save you. I have to save you, and I kind of have to like save myself I through it. I sleep with you as well. Yeah, um, well, but you know. I, I do think that what you touched on there, despite going a little bit broader, I think that's the overwhelming theme that I seen from these mm -hmm. three episodes. It's whether or not people can understand what is Kilgrave controlling them, or mm -hmm. what is their own instinct just easily coming mm -hmm. out. So you see it with Malcolm. Oh, is right. he actually an under? Is he had he had those addictions in in mm -hmm. him before? He, he said it later. Yeah. He, yes. Like, I don't know if he gave this to me or mm -hmm. if I already had it within me or if he woke it up and that's the same or thing or if it's part of me forever now well, like yeah. who am I same thing with Jessica it, it, like, does this define mm -hmm. me Je Jessica's not even like she's not being controlled by him right now but she yeah. still needs to send him selfies every certain mm -hmm. amount of time so she's mm -hmm. he's still got control over her but not actually using his power the issue goes beyond that and there's something yeah. Malcolm says and I think it's in this series of episodes I've seen the whole thing so mm -hmm. they're a bit more blurry for me um, where he talks about just sort of the freedom of being com completely mm -hmm. under someone's uh, dominance mm -hmm. And a dominant and submissive relationship can be a very, very healthy relationship, provided you have the right boundaries and yeah. you have the right conversations. Fifty Shades? Yeah. Fi well, no, actually, <laughs> that's not a healthy that is, example. I know, that's a I really know. Bad I just, example. I just, seen, I just heard dominant, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, but yeah, no, that that is a real thing, and the idea that there are some people who actually might even enjoy that mm -hmm. to some mm -hmm. extent is at least something that's addressed lightly. Um, but we see the extreme, and we see the negativity of it, and we even see that uh, with Carrie Ann Moss, even though she's in a relationship with two women, mm -hmm. or in the three women, I guess. But you know, she's very domineering, and she's not—it's not a very healthy relationship with her with her wife at the moment. Yep. That divorce is going rather badly. Yeah, so mm -hmm. far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And and I think that's—it is an interesting theme, and you 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 said it right there. It's like. So what I relate to this is when you, you hear stories of abusive relationships, that's why it extends all sort of uh, boundaries as shown. That's why I love it. It's like you hear from these uh, stories of perhaps uh, people who are facing domestic assault and things like that. It's like they're often too scared to come away from it because it's only what they know. Yeah. So it's like Jessica's facing those boundaries because she's trying to come to terms with it herself. She doesn't know whether or not she was giving in to him or whether or not it's it was his control. And that's what's so interesting about the support group that is yeah. formed because while everyone else there is going there to try to get over and work through their problems with Kilgrave, Jessica's not trying at all. She's like, I don't want to work through my problems. I want to use this just to get information. She has absolutely no desire to even try to recover because she needs that that desire for vengeance. She doesn't want to quell it whatsoever because I feel like in many ways, if this character doesn't have that that hatred in mm -hmm. her, I don't know, I would say hatred, that's not the right emotion. You know, this just this this fire, this passion, she probably wouldn't know where to go and how to, how to even live. Like that's yeah. what's fueling her. What I, on that topic, mm -hmm. I wanna talk about Hope a little bit. Yes. Because we find yes. out so much yes. about her. Um, I mean, by episode six, we find out exactly what's happened. She's been beaten by someone in the prison and then we find out mm -hmm. she's paid this woman to beat her because she's pregnant so dumb. Um, and she yeah. specifically talks about rape and mm -hmm. coming away from this uh, horrible thing that's happened with Kilgrave and mm -hmm. being forced to kill her own parents and that's that dark side of that control or um, you know the submissive relationship but not really consensual not really yeah. uh, it, not something she wanted to be a part of. And that, yeah. that kind of brings us back that's a necessary storyline because as I was talking off camera like Kilgrave such an enjoyable character to watch. Like when the scene where he's first run into Jessica Jones is a powerful scene. Like when he first sees her, he just disperses with the two women that he's with as if mm -hmm. they're nothing and then treats her like she's an object. And you can't help but be captivated by his acting because he's just like, okay, horrible sense of fashion. Like he's eyeing her up in different pieces. So you're kind of like watching it lightheartedly, but then you, you see Hope's story and it takes it so dark that you have to be taken back to help evil of a character Which this is, guy is, he's not cute and charming no, boyish. Yeah. He's a horrible monster. I know, but his acting is so compelling that you cannot help but, you try to say the moment when he's in the cafe. Maybe you can be both. You yeah, know? that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the thing both. we see constantly. Exactly, yeah. and that's what they're trying to pro provide this dilemma because you need these storylines because it's so easy to be taken away. The moment when he's in the cafe, and he tells everyone to be quiet so he can see Jessica's picture, that's a funny scene. You watch that and you're like, kind of laughing at it but you need to be taken back to realize how dark of a character he is. And that's something the show I think does really, really yeah. well is that it feels organic that we're dealing with you know superhero fights and everything and then we're gonna bring this right back to rape and abortion and mm -hmm. it feels actually kind of natural yes. uh, dramatically yeah. anyway. Um, but there's something that I think people talked about a lot in the comments is the idea that uh, Kilgrave is a character that people are enjoying as a character 
But the issue of whether or not you have to like a villain for the villain to be great, mm -hmm. I, I argue that you don't have to like them, you have to understand them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to know where they're coming from, they have to be believable. If they're believable enough, there might have elements of sympathy, but you don't have to like them. Kilgrave is no. evil as no shit. Yeah. 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 Kilgrave is the most evil, like we've had like super Nazis mm -hmm. in the Marvel Universe, and I, and I hate and I hate Kilgrave more as a person well, because yeah. he's so well written and so much yeah. more fleshed out. You know, I mean, look at look at uh, oh gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Captain America, um, Red Skull. Hugo Weaving. yeah, the Red, Red Skull, Skull yeah, yeah, Red Skull. You know, yeah, yeah, he's he's a terrible evil Nazi turned you know head of Hydra, and I'm like. Okay, you're you're actually evil and terrible, but you're really a crappy villain because you don't capture my attention. Well, I He's mean, just a flat yeah. you don't have exactly. to be but, but, hideously yeah. deformed or scary looking to be evil. But, but I'm, yeah, Beautiful but, people, friendly people, oh, sweet people. Of course, but I'm saying, but Kilgrave captures my attention as a villain because of how be, well because of how realistic he yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, and and I think the charm and the, at ease, like even without his ability to command people. Um, and, I, and I think when they, when they use Malcolm and a couple of the other people where they choose to do things for him, mm -hmm. um, that's where you, you kind of see that like, cause you know, with abusers, with murderers, with, you know, certain criminals, you always say, oh, I never expected that of him. Yeah. He was so nice. And you, that doesn't mean you're blameless. Exactly. That's something we but need to learn. I know, and I think that's such a great way that they paint Kilgrave mm -hmm. in that area that, you and know, the, we see this truly yeah. evil side. And the thing about him is, is that you, you're starting to see him sort of get bored of his own, like, ability to do things. Mm -hmm. So, like, he is, he, when he was buying the house in that scene, like, he actually didn't want to can I have someone ask about that. he didn't mm -hmm. want him to to just simply give him the house he was like no. and then he stopped himself he's like no i've got oh. this drawn up it's legal mm -hmm. like he wanted to actually see if if his manipulation was part of his character not just part of his powers if you know oh, what i mean yeah thanks cuz i was wondering if maybe he had reached a limit point with his powers they, or... they'll explain that in a bit more detail okay. like in the next episode mm -hmm. okay. uh, they'll they'll at least explain why that was important yeah, okay. yeah yeah there's there's okay. a I reason won't there it for you, but yeah. in case someone's Ooh. following along cuz we're doing three episodes mm -hmm. time i think we'll do four in the last yeah. time i'm we purposely this. not yeah. going ahead yeah. that's what i was i yeah. like i like watching them in, in snippets like this but mm -hmm. it, as well as the theme of people not understanding if it's him controlling i think the theme carries over to Jessica and everyone else is they, they don't know who's being controlled now. Everyone's a suspect. She, her paranoia mm -hmm. is through the roof because mm -hmm. she doesn't, if someone even is staring blankly as she's seen, like she automatically considers them under Kilgrave's power. And that's what's so captivating about him is his ability to now control her mind without actually using his powers. We also need to talk about uh, Luke Cage mm -hmm. and uh, oh, where that no. relationship, because that, that went rather badly. Oh, and I no. like that it was Actually, him saying you're, you're a piece, piece of shit. Of shit. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, and if anyone has the right, and this particular scenario, like, I, I get it. Yeah, I he get was it. Right, but it hurts so That's much to hear him say it. I, it, it, it kills me that it took. So, like, I wish she would have just been honest, but that obviously it. it's not. Within Jessica, that's not her character. She would never just be... How do you start I having know, that conversation? I know. What, what's the first... Okay, so to begin with, yeah. there's a super psychic. <laughs> But it's like the moment she saw his dead wife's photo in the medicine cabinet. How do you how do you continue? And I think the way that they played that out, because the fact that you know those sort of things compound on each other, it's like you just keep making mistake after mistake because you're trying your best. You think you have the best intentions, and then to have it all come out the way it did, and, and Luke had every right to do what he did, yeah. and it, it was almost like cathartic mm -hmm. as a viewer to see him call her that. You know, I'm like, oh. You're right, Luke. That that's what yeah. I was gonna say. Is like, of course, we love the show. And we love to, mm -hmm. to attach ourselves with Jessica as a character, but that was a, that was a horrible thing that she continued to do. Was yeah. that she would not be honest with him? She had whether or not the control or not over um, the the death of his wife yeah. was the main factor. It was the continued ability to go about her day and further affect his emotions, knowing full well that she'd killed. Uh, his wife and not just telling her the, not telling him the truth and that's where I, I think the major flaw was like I don't think he's he understands Kill, I don't think he fully understands Kilgrave's mm -hmm. abilities but he knows that it wasn't her but it's the fact that she never said anything to him that's that well that's something him. you see and this is another again in addition to the whole idea of power in general this is often a show about relationship dynamics yes and the idea that the things that can be an impediment to a relationship are things in the past that you don't understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that you can get really judgy about yeah. because you weren't there yeah. And you don't know what it was like to make those decisions and to be part of that 
life and that yeah. lifestyle or whatever it was at the time. And uh, yeah, I think the show is handling it well and I'm curious to see what you think of where it goes uh, from here. Before we go, because this is a, another really long review, hmm. um, one of the things that a lot of people have brought up for one reason or another is comparing this show, Jessica Jones, to Supergirl as an entity. I feel like that's comparing Star Trek and Star Wars because they seem mm. similar, but they aren't. They're not. Oh, yeah. They both have stars. Yeah, the words. Yeah. I see. I, I was comparing together. it to like, you know, we have to ask what's the better show, Mad Men or Arrow, because they both have male leads. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, because that's the, there's the same basic thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, but like, but I think what we have here is a show where Jessica Jones is looking at severity and consequence mm -hmm. and serious drama. It is of, of trying to apply realism to the superhero genre, and Supergirl is aspirational. Supergirl is actually like, because the whole point of Superman is supposed to be something you look up to, and Supergirl is the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to look at this and like, isn't it nicer this way? And like, yes, and I enjoy it. It's a, it's an aperitif. I also think nice. the really important uh, distinction here is that Jessica Jones isn't a superhero show per se. No. She is super powered, but most of it is her fighting against being necessarily superhero. Mm -hmm. While she's trying to be a hero and trying to save, you know, who she can, she's not. Iron Man, she's not Captain America, you know, she's, it's just a, a woman trying yes, to do what she can. She's never going to be that figure yeah. who saves the she's world. She's not going to be Jewel well, in that costume. It's, right. And it's yeah. because her, her, her goal to, to save, well, she, she knowingly mm -hmm. is going to save a lot of people from harm by, by killing Kilgrave, but it's more driven by her own personal fear of him as well. So superheroes more, or anything else, more than anything else are often considered selfless heroes who yeah. want to just go out and do good, which is understandable but in her case is like she's been so petrified by this man that she she's thinking about herself in the same way she's thinking about everyone else and I think that's what differentiates it here's for, here's what it is for me isn't it nice that we have them both anyway yeah right regardless just to compare though I really dig Supergirl I'm really enjoying that show I haven't I watched it they, but okay. it, it's just co it's common yeah. at practice for people oh we have two separate female leads let's compare them and see how the show especially because it's DC and Marvel yes. people love to put the well, two together I, well I just think it's important for us all to make sure that women are constantly in competition with each other for our, <laughs> for uh, our appreciation I don't want to men do that to me right so we get that a lot yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm You're deciding which like one of you I like better <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, everybody, thank you for watching uh, our latest review, Jessica Jones. We'll be back next week with the next three episodes. If you want to follow along with us, uh, we hope you keep Jones in for more. Oh, man, I was going to stop you. Before Every time, I'm going to say that. <laughs> just, just.